Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So I'm over at my buddy Steve's house. We got a 2014 Mazda 6 in the shop. And uh, in this video, we're gonna do front brake siding. Before we get started, remember to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and subscribe to all of our notifications. That way they'll get a heads up when we upload a new video. So right now we're getting ready to zap the wheels off. With 21 millimeter socket. Yep, 21 millimeter. for the caliper and then take the caliper bracket off we'll convert the pads over on the bracket on the bench we'll clean up all the slides and lube our caliper pins and uh, then we'll swap the rotor over there's nothing holding the rotor on there's no hold down so the rotor will come off once you give it a little smack so let me get the tools and we'll get going on it all right so we got two 14 millimeter bolts here to take the caliper off we're going to depress the piston um, as we're taking it off and then we're going to take the caliper bar off and that's two 17 millimeter bolts on the back and we take the caliper bar off the brake pads will come with it and we'll transfer those over on the bench. As you back the bolt off a little, if you push in on the, on the bolt, you can find out if the caliper pin is frozen. Now these aren't pushing in, so more than likely this pin is dragging and hanging up. And that'll give you a false sense of security. It'll make you feel like you have a firm brake pedal, but your brake pads really aren't squeezing down when you step on the brake because the caliper pin is not moving. Very common, uh, if you have a vehicle that you've got, um, you don't know, you just got, um, just by loosening those bolts, you can push it on them and make sure your caliper pins are frozen. You may not need brake pads at the time, but you want to make sure that the caliper pins are, are moving so you can take the caliper off, lubricate the caliper pins, put it all back together, and it's going to um, increase the life of your brake pads. So now I'm going to try and collapse this piston. Uh, very slowly, I'm going to take the pry bar and wedge it in between the brake pad and the caliper. I'm slowly pushing and I can feel the piston collapsing and this is just going to help me when I go to put the brakes back on. You can collapse this with a C-clamp or anything like that but now just doing what I did the piston is completely collapsed. So we're going to um, sit this up on top right now and we're going to end up securing this thing up in, in this area here with a uh, tie wrap or a bungee cord so it doesn't fall off. We just put a bungee cord up here and we just secure the caliper up here so it's not going to fall. And um, we're going to take our two 17 millimeter bolts out of the back here and then take the bracket with the brake pads off. Now, this customer has a distortion problem with his rotor. So even though his brake pads look good, um, he's getting a pulsation. So, you know, it's most places are charging 20 bucks to turn rotors right now. Um, the new rotor was just on the 30, so it's really not kind of worth turning them anymore. Some people don't, um, but you're taking, you're making them thinner when you turn them, and they're more likely to distort again. So um, we're apt to change the rotors with this job. So we're going to take the two 17 millimeter bolts off in the back here, and we're going to remove. So we can remove this as an assembly, and we'll change these over on the bench. We have the rotor on here now. Now, 
We're always talking about another season. See how rusty this is right here? This is why the rotor was giving us a hard time coming off. So we're going to never seize that up for the next time. And um, that's going to help, you know, the rotor not being frozen on there. And also the wheel sits on this hub here. And this is steel and the rims are aluminum. This can build up oxidation. If you ever get a flat, you're going to have a hard time pulling the road, uh, pulling your wheel off on the side of the road. So it's a good practice to put some nevices around here and a little on the lug nut. So if you ever have a flat and you're stuck on the side of the road, your tire is not going to be frozen onto the hub here. It's very common. Okay, so we got the caliper uh, bracket off with the pads in it, and we're going to extract the pads. We're going to clean the bracket with a little wire brush, and then we're going to lube a caliper pins, put it together. We got new clips in the kit to put on, and we're going to use um, we use the synthetic brake caliper uh, brake pad lube for the guy for the slides here, and we can use them on the caliper pins. So we'll move our Two pads. And we can pry the clips out. Okay. okay, so we took the clip off and we can match up our clips. They're all going to go on you know, the way that we took them off, obviously. So if we do them a couple at a time, there won't be any confusion. So. Are you confused? <laughs> Wait a minute, how did this go on here? Okay. <laughs> I'll have to right. rewind the video. Okay, so I have them all. I'm just here to give Steve a hard time, so really. I have them all set up, so now we take down. <laughs> Take our wire brush, which I'm in need of a new one. But you want to clean these, and a lot of times when you put these on, after we get this all together, you have to make sure that your brake pads are going to slide in and out of these things. And on the Chevy products, the pickup trucks, for some reason, these things seem to swell up a lot, and then your brake pads are frozen. And then you'll have that real hard, firm brake, and you think your brakes are great, but you're not stopping very well. So... So now we got these in all wired up. We're going to put a thin coat of uh, grease in here, just a thin, thin coat, because this doesn't have any slides or anything. So, and uh, what kind of grease are we using here? I'm using the synthetic, um, synthetic uh, brake caliper grease. So, and it looks like this stuff right here. You can get it at the auto parts store. Yep. So I get the first clip back in, and I get, I'm putting the second clip back in. And these are all in now, so I'm going to go and remove these two bottom ones. Just prying them out like that, they come out. And then we'll match these two up as well. Brush these up. Yeah, you want to take some time here. You don't want to skimp out and skip this part. This is critical to the brake performance. And, and once we get this all together in loop, we'll show you how the brake pads need to slide. So match our clips up here. That one matches up with that one. And this one matches up with that one. So a little bit of This is mainly just to stop the corrosion process, slow it down, so they don't swell up. Okay, that one's in. Okay, that's in. Now we're gonna do our caliper pins. And like I said, when we were pushing on these pins, they really weren't moving. So 
Yeah, they're a little tough. Yeah, so so a little dry. So we're going to lube these all up with the caliper pin grease. And they don't seem pitted or anything. If they nope. were pitted, you could wire wheel them and then yeah. grease them, right? Yeah, but, it, you know, if they're pitted and really corroded bad, you wire wheel them, and if they're pitted to a point, you, you may want to replace them. And if you don't, this is something that you have to stay on to make sure that they're lubricated properly. So, so see how this pin's moving like that now? That's after it's been greased. And you'll notice that this one is moving like that, but yet this one is not. So, okay, now the, the bottom one here has a little rubber thing on it that the other one didn't have right there. So they are directionally, you want to put them on, and that's for a vibration. So when you step on the brake and the caliper kicks, the pin is a little worn, that rubber takes off the little thump that would happen there, so. Okay, see how smooth that is? That's the way it should be. So when we had the, when we took the bolts off, when we had the, when we had threaded the 14 millimeter bolt, and we had it on there, we were saying push on it, and it didn't move, you want to see this. So if you if you just, you know, rotate your tires and you crack this bolt loose, your caliper pin should push in like that. If they don't push in like that, you should really take these apart and lubricate them and check your brakes. Even though your brake pads may be thick, if these things are not moving, you're not going to wear your brake pads and you're getting that false sense of security that your brake pedal is nice and firm. So this is critical to make sure that your brakes are working properly. Now, we're going to lubricate our our new clips that we put in here. And I like to do this off the vehicle so I'm not getting any of this on the rotor. So we're going to get these all together and sliding and we're going to put our new brake pads on. We're going to show you how we have to get the new brake pads to slide sideways here. So. brake pad should slide back and forth freely and when we clean the bottom wire wheel the bottom wire brush the bottom of the caliper bracket here if that's rusted and corroded it lifts the clip up and pushes the clip up now that shortens the area for your brake pad to drive to slide in and that's why the brake pads can drag so we got one of our new brake pads here and we're going to put it into place. Try not to touch the brake pad with your fingers if you can. You, if you do, you can put a little sandpaper on there and sand them. Need a hammer? Nope. <laughs> you sure? Just gonna have a little patience. Okay. <laughs> so usually people will cut this out of the video, but I'm gonna leave it in just so yeah. you can see in real time. <laughs> right. try, we we might be the, up again. Let's try the other side. <laughs> We don't like the sugar coat nothing over here. Yeah. <laughs> it's obviously sliding through. I just got to get them to slide through evenly here. Okay. All right. So see how this is sliding here? So we know this brake pad is good. Now, I've touched it, and I've got some paw prints on it. So we're going to sand those off after we get the other one on here. And then we'll sand them up quick. I'm grab some sandpaper. Comes right off. All right, now we're gonna get the other the other one on. A lot of people put these on after the brackets on, and you can do it that way. Um, we just wanted to show you how the slides go, so we may just put this one on and then slide this brake pad in. 
So let's get our um, caliper stuff, everything lubed up with the Nevesis. We're gonna do our caliper prim brackets and the two um, bolts here that hold the caliper on. And I got some Nevesis over here. Got our brake rotor, the new rotor in the box that's open. We're going to use a little brake clean to clean it off and wipe that down. We got the Nevesis on all our bolts here. We want to remember the Nevesis spindle hub bearing flange so that the new rotor is not going to stick in the future if we have to take it off. Just put a little bit on your lug nuts, studs. Okay, let's go grab that rotor. Good. So we're just spraying a little bit of brake clean on the rotor to get the, they put like a little mineral oil on them so that they don't rust when they're in the package. We want to take that off. When you put new brakes on, you normally get a smell for a day or so because of what's on this. We're not spraying the inside here. We don't really care about that. It's only our braking surface that we care about. We don't want to touch this with our fingers, so we're going to go put this on. We're going to grab the bracket. Slide the caliper bracket back on. You have to push in on the rotor to get this to line up. You can put a lug nut on the rotor if you wanted. Um, by putting a lug nut on the rotor, it doesn't jump around. It's not a bad idea. I'm able to do it and hold it on with one hand and Tighten this side up. We're gonna install our other brake pad in the back here now. Not touching it, it's nice and clean. And slide it into the clips here. Easier said than done. Okay, it's in. And you can feel the pad slide in easy and then it's moving because we cleaned our points so we know that that is good. So we've got the two brake pads on clamped. We've got these on. We're just going to impact these down right now and then we'll slip our caliper back on. But we've already collapsed the piston so the caliper is going to slide right on. I'm squeezing the pad so they don't rattle off. Now we've already, we've already collapsed the caliper. We're gonna take some of that brake caliper pin lube and we're gonna put it on the dust boot of the piston here. On the piston. We wanna put a little lube on this. These can dry out and get brittle and crack. And just by putting a little bit of brake lube on this thing, you're just gonna extend that, give that boot some moisture and keep it lubed. And this is going to go against your brake pad so there's no squeak or squeal or anything. And, you know, you can use Nevesis on that. And I put some on the inside of the caliper where it touches the brake pads. Now they have coating and they also have um, like a metal sleeve on the brake pad. So um, I just do this as a precaution and I've always done this. And now a caliper pin has been collapsed because we collapsed it from the beginning. We're going to slide that on and we can push in our caliper pin boot a little bit. 
so we can get the caliper to slide on. Now the caliper is on, we just line up our boots, I mean our bolts. <coughs> and we'll tighten up the 214 millimeters. Now, if you go and step on the brakes after we're done this, before we go to the next wheel, you'll take the pressure off of the master cylinder because we've pushed fluid back into the master cylinder. So if you do all four brakes, you know, you could have some fluid leak out of it. So after we get done this one wheel, we'll step on the brake, the piston will push out, the fluid will go back to its proper position, and then we'll do the next one so we won't leak any fluid out of the out of the master cylinder. So we tighten our 17s, we're going to tighten the 214s up here. Okay, we come around to the front. If you have any questions, if there's any residue on here, we're just going to hit it with the brake clean again and then wipe it down. But we didn't get any anything on our um, brake rotor. We can rotate it, and we can just wipe this little stuff off, and, and then this uh, this brake will be done. There was no bolt that held this on. Some of them have a bolt. There was none on this one. So, um, so we just wipe this down now, and this one is done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop around to the other side. You always want to do brakes in pairs. Um, the other side's done the exact same way as this side was done, and we're going to wrap it up. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I will reply back to you. Uh, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. we got a lot of great content coming out. Thanks for watching.